Hi you guys, welcome back to the channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose. So I'm diving into the Chiron readings. This is going to be for the sign of Cancer. If your Chiron is in Cancer or if you have Chiron in the fourth house, this reading is for you. It is a general reading, so it may or may not resonate. Just take what does and leave the rest. For those of you who don't know Chiron, it's the wounded healer, okay? He's not a planet. It's an asteroid that orbits between the planets Saturn and Uranus. And wherever your Chiron is in your chart, that represents the area of your life where you need to do the most healing or where you actually are the most powerful as it relates to helping others heal in that particular womb. Now, because it orbits between Saturn and Uranus, Saturn is a planet that is, he's considered like the grandfather of the Zodiac, or I'm sorry, not the Zodiac, of the cosmos. And he's all about constrictions, limitations, karma. He wants you to do things in a certain order, okay? Uranus is like the weird quirky uncle, okay? He is very progressive, he's unconventional, he's all about sudden changes, he really rules the future. Saturn rules 10th house with Capricorn, uh, Uranus rules Aquarius in the 11th house. So think about those energies as it relates to Chiron. Now Chiron is currently placed in the sign of Aries. So wherever Aries is in your chart, that could definitely give you some hints as to where you could do some work currently for your Chiron, but then also consider like Saturn and Uranus. So Saturn is currently placed in Aquarius, Uranus is currently placed in Taurus. And those energies can definitely impact the Chiron as well, since that's where Chiron orbits between. All right, but you know, it gets very complicated because everyone's chart is different, but I just wanted to give you that opening. All right, so I'm starting out with the readings with a few astrology reading cards. And again, this is for the sign of Cancer. So we're gonna see where we go with this. Chiron and Cancer. Chiron and Cancer, immediately I'm thinking of blocked heart chakra or um, blocked um, capacity or avenue of like feminine energy since uh, Cancer is ruled by the moon. A ton of feminine energy. Very um, emotional, but definitely very like uh, deep within your emotional body. So if you have a wound there, you probably don't feel comfortable going deeply into your emotions. Um, could be a little bit shallow, okay? But that doesn't mean that you know, you're know you a bad person or anything. It's just an area of yourself that needs to really be healed. All right, we have, oh, Saturn, here he is. Look, there's the grandfather. <laughs> the part of you that accepts challenge to gain wisdom. Here we go. So some of you could have your Chiron in the 10th house or your Chiron conjunct Saturn. Um, conjunct means side by side. We have Pluto, your ability to transform, take a big leap forward and rebirth. Uh, Pluto rules um, Scorpio and Scorpio rules the eighth house. So you could have your Chiron in the eighth house or conjunct your Pluto. What else? And we have the eighth house. Oh my goodness, can't make it up. This is the house of Scorpio, um, home to Pluto. This transformational area of your life is about shared resources and intense emotions. So many of you could definitely have your Chiron in the eighth house or your Chiron next to Pluto. So here we go. This is definitely about resolving karma, you guys. This is definitely going deep. This is shadow work. This is resolving any type of low vibrational behaviors you have had in the past, any type of toxic cycles you've been in, and really overhauling <clears throat> that area of your life, okay? It's inner work. I'm just getting that because of this Plutarian energy, this eighth house energy, and then Saturn, like I was saying, is about constriction and about karma. Um, he really is going to keep you uh, on task, keep you in line, okay? But it's to gain the wisdom. It's to take those lessons and transmute all the discomfort with those lessons and, you know, make it good for you in some way. Make it helpful to others. Remember, Chiron is also how you can help others heal. So this is definitely what's going on for you right now, Cancer. Um, you know, the, the weird thing, not weird, but the ironic thing with this is that although I think many of you are doing deep work, shadow work, is that you're comfortable doing that. Um, cancer, because it's ruled by the moon, because you it, and it's home to the fourth house, which is the house of like foundation and family and a sense of kinship is that I think that with a Chiron placement in, in cancer, it's like it's almost inherently wanting to go into the emotions and go deeper, going into shadow. Um, moon energy can also represent shadow energy, just like Pluto. Okay, so some of you are there, but you know, again, like you're kind of willingly going through this process, even though it's really uncomfortable. I think a lot of you are very knowledgeable and aware, like self-aware that this is needed. Maybe some of you have like some tower moments uh, within the past year that kind of catapulted you into this uh, healing work. So for Saturn, we have Knight of Swords. OK, 
Okay, going towards clarity, truth. It's action oriented. Knights are always about action. Ooh, another knight, knight of cups. This could be regarding um, a love situation since usually the knight of cups is about, a, you know, offering um, love, offering, you know, some type of companionship. Like, you know, let's say you have a crush on somebody, like speaking up and saying you have a crush on that person. Oh, and here's the tower. I literally just picked it up from the deck. I shuffled a little bit and I just picked it up from the middle of the deck. Yeah, so there's definitely a tower moment that has happened. It could have been a tower moment regarding a relationship um, where, you know, I'm not getting breakup vibes here. I'm just getting that maybe some of you entered into a relationship for karmic reasons. And the lesson here is to really kind of reveal who you are, um, you know, below the service or who this person is, who you're with below the surface as well. You know, not really just being married and committed to who you are on the surface, like surface level body, physicality, but just who you are on a soul level, what you have to bring to the table, your experiences, those wounds, how they're being played out in your day-to-day -day lives, things like that. So this is definitely like a, you know, an awakening as well, I think, with this. But um, having a great deal of compassion for yourself and for whoever else you're very close to. If this is a romantic relationship, you know, really working with each other to understand um, each other's love languages, each other, each other's, um, you know, their blind spots, like things that they are missing, things they don't do well, you know, bringing things up to their attention. With, I'm getting that with that Saturnian energy. Uh, what else we have for Pluto? Oh, the star card of Aquarius. Beautiful energy. This is a card of healing. It's a healing after trauma, being hopeful for the future. Okay. It's also like very expansive, you know, Aquarius it rules the 11th house. So some of you could have your Chiron in the 11th house as well, or your Chiron um, conjunct Uranus since Uranus rules Aquarius. So yeah, you all are definitely healing and being better because this person you're with could be a past life soulmate, or you could be healing um, early childhood wounds, um, healing the inner child. Six of cups is usually like nostalgic, could be represent early childhood or a past life soulmate. Maybe some of you are with a past life soulmate and they have um, kind of cracked you wide open to help you see things that maybe you weren't seeing before. Remember I was saying like some of you could have gotten into a relationship for karmic reasons, but it was like this, the universe kind of gifted you a relationship with this person so that they could be the one that would show you the pattern you were in, the pattern you were in in terms of choosing your romantic partners. Queen of Pentacles, yeah, stability, leadership, being very comfortable in who you are, being very um, aware of your own self-worth, since Pentacles for me is about self-worth, um, sitting kind of like on your throne a little bit, it's queen energy, not gender specific, could be a man, but yeah, sitting like high on your horse, like being very proud of who you are, maybe some of you had struggled with like low self-esteem previously, and this is why you kind of are choosing partners in a very low vibrational way, eight how? eighth house what do we have six of swords yeah moving away from choppy waters into calmer shores moving away from the you know dysfunctional behavior moving away from the karmic situations moving away from things that really just are not meant for you um that you could have been forcing yourself to stay in and that could have been this tower moment here again to really destabilize you um strike lightning to the foundation destroying it so that you could start a new surprise and you know aces have come up three of swords it's heartbreak card but it's also <clears throat> excuse me an opportunity for healing and it's a three three is always about collaboration or just balancing your mind body and spirit okay um and when i was saying like crack wide open like this person like it could feel like a three of swords like it could feel like heartbreak but it's not it's just that this person is like loving you from a place that you have never been loved before and that can feel really really uncomfortable and um you know hurtful if you have especially a chiron in cancer you know cancer is a very sensitive sign it's it's like the mama bear of the zodiac very soft very nurturing but if somebody is coming in to kind of reveal things to you that you've never seen before like to a cancer to cancer cancerian energy that's kind of like very disruptive right very um you know, it feels mean, it feels cold, but it's not. It's all about the wisdom. It's Saturn energy. It's to kind of put you in line, put you in place. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Oh, the sun card. This came out, I think, in the Taurus reading. <clears throat> sun card. This person is cracking you wide open or this experience is cracking you wide open so the sun could get in. Sun is a healing energy. Um, Leo energy. 
So fifth house, maybe some of you have your Chiron in the fifth house or um, Chiron conjunct your son in your chart. Um, but yeah, healing, moving away, um, really, you know, healing the heart chakra, um, being patient with yourself. But, you know, this is like deeply transformational. Um, that always kind of comes up whenever I do Scorpio readings, but I know this is Cancer, but because you have so much Scorpio in this reading that, you know, I feel like I'm channeling some Scorpio energy too. So again, some of you could have Chiron in eighth house or Chiron conjunct Pluto, um, Chiron conjunct Uranus, um, which is kind of pulling out the, the Scorpio energy. Um, but this is beautiful. This is really, really beautiful. I think this, this is like a process. This is like a... Um, a transformation like awakening process that many of you are happening but it's great because I don't think any of you are doing it alone I think there are people around you who really really love you and are being very compassionate and patient with you and you know allowing you to have your ups and downs sometimes you know when especially if you're in a karmic relationship it's like there is no room for error there's no margin for mistakes you know because it's like you're so you know connected on this like very superficial level that when it is time to go deep and things get really tough like you know people get scared they might run away they might shut down but I think that this is like a relationship that is meant to really be deep um and, and this is a time for you to learn how to be very comfortable in that so this is how you're going to heal some of your Chiron energies in your chart I love it Cancer I'm going to get one Keepers of the Light Oracle for you call to action Commander Ashtar Take charge, lead by example, walk your talk. Okay, so this person could be like really urging you to do just that, to kind of stand up for yourself. Be, you know, kind of like match your words to your actions. So I think Cancer might not always do that so well. Um, goose, take time to rest and recuperate rather than continuing your striving. Yeah, so it's kind of slowing down a little bit in your day to day. Uh, now let's get one um, Angel Answers card. Choose a new direction. Choose a new direction. So I think that this is like kind of piggybacking off of that Six of Swords energy. Choose a new direction in terms of like how you see yourself in relationships and how you kind of see, you know, this who you are like inside and out, you know, like kind of like who you are um, fully. You know, I think sometimes we know certain parts of ourselves really well and we do things certain things really well and we're not afraid to speak about that and show people that but then there are parts of us that aren't so like you know we aren't so proud of it right we aren't so willing to open up but i think that you know if we choose a new direction if we choose to be vulnerable if we choose to be very transparent and open there's definitely a great deal of abundance and prosperity waiting on the other side of that okay cancer this is what i have for you i hope that it resonates or at least some of it resonates you can find all my booking information at my website. The link is down below. For all of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. I love all of you. Thank you for sharing your energy with me, for commenting, sharing, and liking the videos. Um, uh, like, the vi like this video if it resonates. Don't subscribe if you have not already. And yeah, I hope to see you all in the next reading. I love you so much and be sure to thrive. Bye.